Hello everyone. Welcome to our video lecture series on Hysis and Unisys simulations. And in today's uh, video lecture, we will show you how to define and use and simulate a heat exchanger in the Hysis and the Unisys environment. We know that heat exchangers, uh, these are ubiquitous equipment which are extensively used in, in a chemical industry or any type of process industries. And using this HISIS or INUSIM, we can very accurately uh, uh, simulate the performance or design a heat exchanger. We'll show you some very simple examples in this lecture series, and then we will, in our future lecture series, we'll show you how to do more complicated problems. So, without wasting any more time, let's go to the very first problem here. Problem, as you can see that we have hot water so let's say we have a heat exchanger i'm showing just a very simple sketch of a heat exchanger here um, so hot water at 250 degrees celsius 1000 psig enters the tubes so here this is at uh, 250 degrees celsius and 1000 psig okay and um, a uh, cold stream of water in a shell and a tube heat exchanger. So basically, here we'll have a cold uh, water stream. So this is a cold water stream coming in, and and this is hot water. Okay. So. Uh, the inlet temperature and pressure of the cold stream entering the shell is 25 degrees Celsius. So, this is 25 degrees Celsius and 130 psig. The outlet temperature of the cold stream, that means the shell outlet. So, here is a shell outlet. Let us assume this is a counter current. So, I am just showing it here. The outlet temperature of the cold stream uh, and the hot stream are 150 and 190. So, this shell side outlet is 150 degrees Celsius and this is at 190 degrees Celsius. Okay. If the flow rate of the hot stream, uh, hot this is the water stream, this is the flow rate of the hot water stream is 100 kilogram per hour. So, this is 100 kilogram per hour. Uh, determine the required flow rate of the cold stream. So, what, will be the, what should be the flow rate of the cold stream to maintain these operating parameters? So, this is my uh, problem. So, once the definition of the problem is done, let us now simulate in uh, the high seas environment. As usual, we go uh, open a new case here. First, we define the components. Since we have water only, because this is water and this is also water, so we have only one component. So we put here water, and that's the only component added. So just add this water. And uh, next, uh, on the fluid packet, since there is only water, we will go only for ASME steam. Other good thermodynamic packages are also available, but in this particular problem, let us use uh, ASME steam. And we enter the simulation environment. Uh, once we are in the simulation environment, this is my heat exchanger icon. So I just right click and drag it here. So, and I will cross it out. Now, uh, now this is as you can see this is the tube side inlet this is the tube side outlet and this is the shell side in, uh, inlet and this is my shell side outlet so let's just name them so uh, tube in let's put that and let's put here tube out and here we put shell in and here we put shell out Okay. And uh, in the parameters, for now, let's put zero pressure drop. Of course, that's not the right uh, situation or the right definition, but uh, we can define definite pressure drops, but we'll take that up in, uh, in our future uh, lecture series. But right now, let's assume there is absolutely no pressure drop. So we put zero both on the tube side and on the shell side. Once that is done, and of course here you can see this is the tube passes per shell is two, uh, shell passes one, and uh, we'll go through these in, in uh, 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 calculate the FT factor. We'll go through this in our future lecture series. But right now let's uh, solve the problem. So here's my worksheet. 
and as you can see uh, tube side inlet is 250 degrees Celsius so first we define the composition of course uh, uh, this is pure water so we hit enter one and one and so tube side uh, composition is defined which is pure water and similarly on the shell side also this is pure water so we hit enter enter so the composition is defined both for the tube side and the shell side let us go for the composition in the hot water which is coming on the tube side let's put that as 250 degrees celsius and then we put 1000 psig here we go and put here 1000 psig let's go the sia is more than 14.7 more than psig and uh, here we go that and also this is say that uh, the out uh, and uh, the in uh, cold water inlet is at 25 degrees Celsius. So cold water, which is on the shell side, which is on the shell side is 25 degrees Celsius. So we put here 25 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 130 PSIG. So I put 130 PSIG here. Again, let's go down all the way. And this is PSIA and here we go down and this is my let's see this is my PSIG so the temperature and pressure both on the tube side and the shell side are defined now um, the flow rate of the hot stream so this is at 100 kilogram per hour the tube side flow rate is 100 kilogram per hour so let's put that as 100 kilogram per hour so once we do that so so that is pretty much done temperature of the uh, the hot stream is coming out is 190 degrees celsius so i put here tube out is 190 degrees celsius and the shell out is 150 degrees celsius so that's when we put that all the parameters would be defined so i'm putting here the shell side out is 150 degrees. so the moment i do that so you see the entire uh, all the parameters all the degrees of freedom let's call that way of this heat exchanger um, satisfied and therefore it turns out green and automatically calculates all the parameters so it wanted to know uh, what would be the determine the required flow rate and you can see uh, the flow rate that really comes out to be is 52.31 so 52.31 kilogram per hour of the cold water coming on the shell side 52.31 so right here if you can see here so based on the composition for 1000 kilogram per hour of this hot water coming in this the flow rate must be 52.31 kilogram per hour to satisfy all the conditions here so it is that easy in a uh, high seas environment so uh, with that let's go to the next problem here this is little more complicated but uh, that's okay uh, it's kind of easy and let me just first explain what the problem is and then we'll go for the simulation here as you can see uh, that we have a gas stream containing here is a gas stream containing eight mole percent of carbon monoxide and 92 mole percent. so again let's draw a very simple heat exchanger diagram here so uh, here um, we have 8 mole percent carbon dioxide and 92 mole percent carbon dioxide we have to know where it's coming in uh, and one bar is fed to west heat boiler we know for the west heat boiler whenever uh, we just recover uh, some heat which could be used for uh, heating up uh, some fluid in in the plant so we so this is a west heat boiler uh, which is basically heat exchanger a large metal shell containing a bundle of small diameter tubes so we have a lot of small diameter tubes here the hot gas flows over the outside of the tube so basically what we have here the hot gas is flowing on the shell side hot gas here and um, uh, liquid water 25 degrees Celsius and 5 bar is fed to the boiler in the ratio so here we have uh, liquid water is in the tube side coming in and it is fed in the ratio 0 0.2 mole so the ratio is let's put that at 0 0.2 kilo mole of water per kilo mole of so we put here one kilo mole of the hot gas okay so that's the ratio 
uh, heat is transferred from the hot gas as it flows over the, of course heat is transferred from the hot gas to this liquid water and it recovers the heat and comes out as hot water uh, hot gas uh, causing the gas to cool and the water to heat to its boiling point and evaporate to saturated steam so what really comes out here at 5 bar this is a saturated steam this is saturated steam we have shown in uh, previous slides how to handle superheated steam but in this case of course we have five bar of saturated steam the steam may be used for heating or power generation so this could be used for any process heating in the plant or this could be used for power generation normally for at a higher pressure um, and uh, uh, this is probably going to be an LP steam and this is going to be used for if it's a yeah, higher pressure steam could be used for uh, power generation that means passing through a turbine but anyway uh, that's later on down the line we are just going to simulate only this heat exchanger here the gas leaving the boiler is flared so basically the gas which would be leaving from here that will be sent to a flare that will be sent to a flare and um, the gas is flared and discharged to the atmosphere the boiler operates adiabatically so right now we are assuming there is no heat loss from this one so we want to know what will be the temperature of the existing gas so what will the temperature of the existing gas that's what we want to know so once we know understand the problem let us just simulate it so we go to uh, view here and we have to add the uh, components so the first component would be of course carbon monoxide so we have carbon monoxide that's added and then of course we have carbon dioxide that's added and all the components which are there must be added immediately and the next of course we have uh, water going to the tube side so that is also another component that has to be added so we, we add water so all the components are now added goes that one and then we go to the free package so ideally uh, what we should have we should have one fluid package uh, one equation of state that's uh, for carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide and let's say Ben Robinson equation of state would be quite good and another equation of state for uh, water uh, let's say no, not the equation of the database let's say ASMST but uh, how to attach two different fluid packages for uh, different components we'll show that in, uh, in, in our uh, later video lectures but in this case although it's not very accurate we are ass assigning only one fluid package let's say peng Robinson equation of state which is going to be applicable for all the three components that means carbon monoxide carbon dioxide and water that's not the ideal thing to do but at least to make it simple we do that so what we're going to do we go all the way down here and assign peng Robinson equation of state for all the three components so and then we go to the simulation environment here and as they say let's take this one and uh, right click and bring it to here so and i just take it out so basically now we are going to define uh, what the system is going to be again this is this is going to be my water coming in at high pressure and uh, this is my steam tube side which is steam going out and here that means the hot gas coming in hot gas coming in and this is my hot gas going out and so uh, that's done and also as you say that for the parameters we assume that the uh, pressure drop is zero for now so we assign that now go to the worksheet in the worksheet so we just put in the values here uh, as we can see that uh, first we define the composition so the water in so here we put one and that's for the sh uh, tube side so we put here one and of course we put that and of course for the uh, steam side also this is one that's pure water going to the tube side and for the hot gas in um, we put the composition here so that would be 0 0.08 because 8 mole percent of carbon monoxide is there and what we enter that and then we enter the carbon dioxide percentage also which is 0 0.8 nine two and that makes it one as you can see that satisfies one so the uh, the shell side composition is also properly defined next we go to the conditions here in the conditions uh, we know that the 
hot gas is coming in at 500 degrees Celsius as one bar. So uh, this is basically here. Uh, this is this is coming at. 500 degrees Celsius so here this is coming at 500 degrees Celsius and one bar here and so we put here uh, 500 degrees Celsius uh, that's what it is coming in and it is coming at one bar so we go here and put here one bar okay and um, we have already defined the composition liquid water 25 degrees Celsius and 5 bar so here we have to put 25 degrees Celsius and of course we have to keep the pressure a little high because it would be coming out as a steam at that temperature so we put that as 5 bar so these two are defined and also we have said that for each um, uh, mole of for each kilomole of hot gas coming in would be sending 0.2 kilomole of liquid water so why not we put that flow rate here we put here 0.2 kilomole uh, and for that we put here 1 kilomole of hot gas once we have done that finally it says uh, here uh, the it is coming out in, in the tube side it is coming out at 5 bar as saturated steam of course this is uh, all automatically this is 5 bar uh, zero pressure drop so the tube side coming in and the tube side going out pressure is the same but here this will be coming out as a saturated steam the way we can do it is just put a value of 1 that indicates that it is coming out as a saturated steam so on the vapor fraction we put here 1 and the moment we do that as you can see the all the parameters the degrees of freedom of this heat exchanger is now defined and has come out as okay and shows green and automatically shows you what the temperature so the temperature of the gas going out will be 292.6 degrees celsius so basically what it shows that this temperature that what it will be going out here this temperature will be 292.6 degrees celsius okay and um, this is now sent to the flare and uh, of course now uh, this shows all the process parameters here this also gives us a uh, design of the heat exchanger also and we will show you how to do that in, a, in our uh, future slides so basically what we have here gas coming in this is 500 degrees celsius and uh, 100 kilopascals a uh, hot gas coming in and one kilomole per hour so that's what's coming in and this is going out and uh, and this is coming uh, water is going at 25 degrees Celsius at 5 bar 0 0.2 kilomole and this is going out at 151.8 degrees Celsius 0.2 bar so we have shown in pre uh, pre previous uh, uh, video lectures how to just show these things how to depict these things in uh, high heat environment so how these tables come out so uh, that's very easy uh, and uh, there are a lot of other features and how to get the design parameters out of this simulation so uh, we'll show those things in our uh, future video lectures so this video lecture is just an introduction on heat exchanger um, hopefully you get an idea how to do that and and uh, so uh, and, and i'll show you more complicated examples in our future uh, video lectures so that's the way you do it um, that means design and simulate a heat exchanger and I'll see you next time. Thank you.